each variable and array that is created in MATLAB and Octave is given a particular data type. In this class, we've discussed double precision floating point variables, character variables, and logical variables, but there are many more different data types. Each data type is allocated a specific amount of memory. Now, since computers have a finite amount of memory, programmers should always be aware of how much is being allocated to the various variables and array that are created in a particular program. In memory, all data is stored as ones and zeros. These ones and zeros are called bits or binary digits. One byte consists of eight bits. The first data type that I'll be discussing is floating point double precision. By default, all variables that store numerical data are floating point double precision variables. Each floating point double precision variable is allocated eight bytes of memory and can store 16 digits of precision. Each element in a floating point double precision array is allocated eight bytes of memory. So if we had a two by five array, 80 bytes of memory would be allocated for that array. The largest number that you can store uh, with the floating point double precision data type is on the order of 10 to the 308. The smallest number is on the order of 10 to the minus 308. We can also create floating point single precision data types. And these are similar to floating point double precision variables, except that each floating point single precision variable is allocated only four bytes of memory and can store only eight digits of precision. You can use the single command to create floating point single precision variables. The largest number that you can store using floating point single precision variables is on the order of 10 to the 38, the smallest number on the order of 10 to the minus 38. You can also create integers. First we'll talk about signed integers. You have a choice when creating signed integers in the amount of memory that you want to allocate for each integer variable. 8, 16, 32, or 64 bits are your options. The more memory that you allocate for each integer, the larger their integer can be. You can create signed integers using the int command, and the number to the right of int is the amount of bits that you are going to allocate for that variable. So in this case, we are going to allocate 8 bits for each element in A. You can also create unsigned integers, and these are similar to signed integers, except that they cannot have a negative sign. You can create unsigned integers with the uint command, followed by the amount of bits that you want to allocate for the unsigned integers. So, so far we've only discussed numerical data types, but there are others as well. There's logical data types or logical variables, and these can only store one of two values, true or false, or one for true, zero for false. Logical variables are allocated one byte each. You can create logical variables by putting a logical expression on the right side of the equal sign. So in this case, we say five greater than four, that's true or one, so A will get the value of one stored in it, or true. Now for B in this case, we say four equal to five, that's false, so zero will be stored in B. With character variables, we should keep in mind that all data in the computer is stored as these ones or zeros or numbers. If a variable has a character data type, the number stored in memory or in the variable is associated with a particular character. So for example, the percent character 
is associated with the number 37. And the lowercase y character is associated with 121. One byte is allocated for each character. And this means that we can only use up to 256 different characters. If you have a string of characters, each character in the string is allocated one byte of memory. So if you have a string of five characters, five bytes of memory will be allocated for that string.